Welcome to Science Gal Aquatics. In today's video, I have an extremely sick guppy and I need your help, so stay tuned. Welcome to Science Gal Aquatics, your place for guppy love and more. Sharing the good, the bad, and the unexpected adventures of fish keeping. Let the show start in three, two, one. Enjoy! So I did come down to the fish room this morning to simply try to work out. I was glancing around at the aquariums to see if there was anything interesting going on. And I have noticed a problem with my favorite guppy over the last four or five days. He's been losing color. The last two days I've noticed him starting to bloat a little bit. But today there's obviously a problem and I'm not really sure what's going on. I'm not sure if it's dropsy with a parasitic type infection, but he's still swimming and eating okay. But it is this five gallon aquarium right here. I want to show you what's going on. I am going to go ahead and take him out and try to dose him with what medication I have on hand. I may take a quick trip up to PetSmart here shortly and see if there's any medications that I don't already have that might help. But again, if you guys have any tips or advice to alleviate this problem in the future, because I'm not sure if there's anything I can do at this point. It might be too far gone. I've probably waited entirely way too long to do this. But again, if you guys have any any ideas on what I can do to either help or alleviate this problem, feel free to leave it in the comments below. But again, it is this aquarium right here, this five gallon guppy tank. It is my favorite guppy, so let me go ahead and show you what's going on. Even though I did initially believe it could possibly be dropsy, now after observing for a little while, I'm not positive this is correct. I do still, however, believe it could be an underlying bacterial or parasitic infection, just not true dropsy. All I can do is continue to research and with your help prevent this from happening in the future. And again, over the last handful of days, I observed a dramatic loss of color and only a slight swelling over the last couple of days, but nothing like the swelling of today. But feel free to leave a comment down below if you have any thoughts on what might be going on. All I want to do at this point is quickly separate using this half gallon beta tank and the main tank water so I can quickly medicate the best I can. I did go ahead and add a little bit of salt to this beta tank before adding the main tank water to give the salt adequate time to dissolve. Next, I'm simply going to add a little bit of API's Fin and Body Cure. This treats bacterial fish diseases. And for every 10 gallons, you're supposed to empty one packet. And since this is only a half a gallon beta tank, I'm only using a small amount. And then I'm simply going to stir. Finally, I'm just going to remove this sick guppy and put it in this medicated tank and see what happens. I know that I am nowhere near an expert when it comes to dropsy. But from what I personally understand when it comes to true dropsy cases, you will see all of the scales on the fish's body raised or pine coned. And in this particular circumstance, there's only a few scales 
that are pine coned on the back tail section of this guppy. And with all of those raised and pine cone scales, you get a lot of swelling and water retention. And from what I understand, it's resulting from some kind of damage to the kidney or in some circumstances, the liver. And it seems like you see this affecting more goldfish and koi over other tropical fish, but that does not mean that they cannot still be affected. Dropsy is actually a number of underlying symptoms that can be caused by bacteria that can be present in the aquarium, but unless your fish's immune system is severely vulnerable, they won't necessarily be affected from this bacteria. And you might even be able to see a few symptoms, for example, a severely swollen descended belly, lethargic swimming, and a refusal to eat. However, my sick guppy at the moment is swimming and eating just fine. Prevention is a huge factor when it comes to continued fish health. And honestly, that's probably all I can continue to do at this point. I try to maintain overall good water quality by performing proper water changes of 10 to 20% weekly and once a month at least a 50% water change. I do try to maintain an overall low stress level for the aquariums. I try to avoid aggressive tank mates and temperature fluctuations. I do also provide an overall good diet. You just don't want to overfeed. That excess rotten food can break down and cause ammonia spikes or unwanted fungus growth. And that's just not good for the overall health of your tank. And I often feed the guppies more times through the day but offer smaller amounts of food at a time. Again, I'm not really sure what's going on, so any advice is welcomed and appreciated. I did go ahead and decide to run up to the pet store to see what they had available, but everything they had in stock I already had some kind of variation of at home in the fish room already. So I decided to go ahead and add a little bit of stress coat and a little bit of medication that I have that treats parasitic infections. The next morning, I quickly ran downstairs to the fish room to see if there was any improvement, and unfortunately, there really wasn't. So I am going to, as a last resort, try to feed some sweet peas to the guppy to see if it might be a constipation issue and maybe this will help. But if you know what this is, feel free to let me know. Don't forget to check out the description box below, like, share, and until next time, thanks for watching. Enjoy!